What's up, everybody? What is up? Welcome to Planet Xbox episode 13. I am your host, Best Spot Kid Smooth. Got my co host, ILP Gaming Addict Man. How you doing this evening? Doing pretty good, man. We're, it's we got a, a lot of eventful stuff that's happened this week. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, feels like a, a, a short week. My vacation is pretty much over, and I got to prepare to start going back to work. And so, whatever game I'm going to wrap up, I have to wrap up this weekend. Um, so, anything uh, you've been playing uh, over the uh, course of the week? I know the Sea of Stars demo came out. Yeah, so I've been playing a lot of Bulger's Gate. Okay, right now, yeah. So that that's what I've really been focusing on. I, I probably have like thirty, forty hours in that at this point. I feel like that's going to be uh, the game you mention for the next three episodes, at least until Star mm-hmm. Starfield come out. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, you know, we we'll have more to talk about when it comes to Starfield. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely, man. Uh, I've been playing. Uh, I, I've been playing. Um, I, re- I think last week. When did I beat Spider Man? I beat Spider Man. I'm now playing. Uh, well, it was the Amazing Spider Man two. I beat uh, via backwards compatibility. I'm now playing Deadpool and Transformers. Had to return. Um, no, I kind of just got rid of it. There was Transformers. I think Rise of the Dark something just wouldn't. It would just crash the Xbox. Um, started playing Transformers devastation and it's pure garbage should have known that didn't realize it was made by platinum games so um i'm paying for it now i gotta hold on to it until i'm ready to get rid of it uh so deadpool played a little bit of quake 2 uh amazing amazing uh remaster slash port that they got going on it gave you everything that ever released and connected to quake 2 and they uh also included quake 64 and if you're playing on the Xbox Series X, you know, you're getting that uh, at 4K, 120 FPS, runs like a, a charm. But games like that, the old school games, man, can be difficult, man. That's why I need, like, a, a current up-to-date version of the game to play or just to remaster Quick 4. Because I feel like that plays a bit friendly. It's not like, you know, it's a bit more grounded. Um, we got some Patreon questions to get to, Addict uh for episode 13 we got only about we got four of them um but they're actually lengthy questions so first one is from my truck nuts he says hey brother smooth if you had to choose between xbox and your family why would you choose xbox what (laughs) he he (laughs) i think we could just skip yeah he answered the question Uh, that that's a troll question yeah uh, I, I would never choose the Xbox over it. my family. I love my family. Um, Graham Pictures says, Hey, Smooth, longtime viewer. I think I speak for a lot of your fans when I say we need more challenges from yourself. Think The Last of Us Grounded or Returnal. You are naturally entertaining, and those streams in the past did great traffic. If you keep... If you keep up with the challenges alongside your regular videos, you will be hitting 100k subs in no time. Uh, Graham, Graham Pitcher says that. Uh, your thoughts on the attic? that, addict? Uh, when it comes to that, you know, I I have set up the majority of those those um, challenges. Just a lot of headache to set those challenges up. There's a lot of things that go into it, and then you know you'll end up having people get mad if you start to succeed uh you know it's just one of those things where it's like they're entertaining yes but they're also mad annoying yeah entertaining stressful and it's damn if you do damn if you don't especially for your family yeah 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 because like the thing is the house uh gets very tense i piss my wife off a lot when i'm doing those things because like i have to start and it'll be tough I could do it now, but it, I would be literally well, limited to weekends doing that. Which if might you did a better. challenge. Mm-hmm. I think the only way to like get you to be able to do it mm-hmm. is you got to get something up front just for attempting it, and you get something more if you complete it. Um, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, I do want to get a challenge done uh, uh, this year. Um, I'm not sure what game. There's a couple of those uh, quote unquote. What about Armor Core? There's Armor Core, there's Lords of the Fallen, there's Lies of P. Um, I think it's either Armor Core or Lords of the Fallen. And I, 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 I struggle with the current Lords of the Fallen game. <laughs> well, I mean, put people, uh, you know, on Patreon, on YouTube, mm-hmm. put in the comment section, what, what, what challenge would you like Smooth to do this year? Yeah, absolutely. And, make uh, that, you know, well, make may, that, maybe the weapon will, because I'm done being the middleman person that's, mm-hmm. that, like, collects the money, because my name was dragged through the dirt last time. Oh, so. Yeah, yeah. For no reason. So it's just like, I'm not trying to have, like, my integrity questioned or anything like that. Yeah. So it, it, it's just like, maybe BG and the Weapon Well community could raise funds for something like that. Yeah. Because uh, the funny thing is people want you to dedicate hours and hours of your life for their entertainment. Mm-hmm. But, like, it's like I said, I know, I'm sure a lot of people will get mad just because I suggest that you get money even if you fail. And it's just like, but, you know, even if Smooth doesn't succeed the challenge, like, like he, he still gave you guys hours and hours and hours of, of content, hours of entertainment. But for some reason, like, I, I guess only happy if, if you don't get nothing, like <laughs> yeah. if you fail at the challenge. And, and, and what people don't understand, I've also been getting better at video games in general. So some of these challenges may not even be like entertaining because I'm not, I don't think I suck all that bad i mean do i still rage i don't know i haven't played games a lot of games i haven't played haven't really challenged me up until again this game is garbage this game is garbage this is the where i kind of sort of rage but i was like i don't have to play this so i just uninstalled it um but other than that i mean i've been trying just trying to explore what i want to uh play and get into Next question comes from DJ. He technically has three questions. He has two questions, and his second question is a two-parter. So let's start with the first question. He says, which controller do you prefer, the PS5 or the Series X? I used to like the Xbox controller as it fit better in my hands, but I think Sony really did it with the PS5. Do I have a dual? All right, I got a dual, dual sense, sense right here. Dual sense. Yeah, I have one right here, too. Um, I will say I like the way... The Dual Sense filled this time is better than the Dual Shock Four, better than the Dual Shock uh, Three in the original PlayStation controller. So the Dual Sense do fit better in my hands. Um, it's actually a well, it's a worthy controller. Um, I kind of don't, I still haven't been swayed by the haptics or whatever they got built in into this thing. I don't, I don't like the R two and L two. Now, like the... I and also I finally got the Elite Series two by the way. Um, but um, if I'm going to compare it, like, it's weightier than the Xbox controller, but the Xbox controller is still my preferred. I like, it just feels just natural. Um, the PlayStation, the, the DualSense feels, I guess, more natural than the uh, DualShock, but I, st- I still prefer the Xbox controller, and that's more evident because when I, I, I when I play my Xbox more than my PlayStation, and then when I play games on PC, I, I use an Xbox controller. I don't use the DualSense um, at all, so just to answer that question, but the DualSense is a better con- a better controller uh, than the DualShocks. I think it's PlayStation's best controller to date. DJ again, he says, "Do you guys prefer when games were fifteen to thirty hours max, or now when they're thirty hours and up? It's kind of the norm, but there's a lot of fluff to inflate the playtime." That's question one. All right, um, I'm trying to think if I should read his part two. All right, I can read the part two. Part two, if a dev drops a 20-hour game, that's great, and to the point everyone complains about it being short, even though it has a good story, what are your thoughts on that, and do you think a 20-hour game with a good story should be less than $70? Um, These are both good questions, by the way. I think it just depends on what type of 20-hour game we're talking about. Are we mm-hmm. talking about like a 20-hour game that like four or five hours of that cinematic cutscenes? Mm-hmm. Because because that takes dramatically from the game itself, like you know, I think there's levels to <laughs> levels to this. I think there's levels to what a twenty hour game is mm-hmm. and what a twenty hour game really is. Like, is there more gameplay than cutscenes? Because the reason that like you start getting lower on that 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 totem pole, because 
with just 20 hours, is it going to be a cinematic thing? Because then you're going to see a lot of cutscenes. I think there's a there's just a lot of different variables that go into that. I myself, as long as the story is told correctly and it has a good narrative and good characters and a good immersive world, like some of the Sony games, I don't mind a short game. Mm -hmm. But it, it's got to hit all those quick and good. Mm -hmm. It's hard to like really set up a narrative off of just like a 20 hour game. It's, it, you know, some games do it very well, but then you get a lot of other games because people act like Sony's the only people that try those games. There's a lot of other people that try and fail them. Yeah. No, you got a, a point there. See, my thing is, is that um, I think the to attack his first way, he says, do you guys prefer games? I prefer games that are, I mean, 15, 30 hours is, is more enough. I mean, I'm fine with the, honestly, personally, I'm fine with an 8 to uh, 12 hour experience. If a game's, for, I think 15 hours to 20 hours is, you know, you know, perfect. I think I did that in, in Dead Island, uh, Dead Island 2, which was, I feel like a perfectly timed game, enough time. Uh, if you wanted to do it through a weekend, you could. If you um, um, no life didn't, that's the only game you could focus on. Um, I prefer games on the shorter end because I feel like I can play more, you know, and enjoy more than with in that case. You know what I mean? I prefer shorter games. I kind of get really bent out of shape when I'm spending so much time on a single game. Now, in terms of if a dev dropped a 20 hour game, that's great. Uh, I, the pricing now, I, I don't, I'm not a fan of $70 games to begin with. I'm against $70, they already lost me there with the $70. I don't think any single I've just, game, I've just bent the knee on it to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. Like, it's like, look, I don't want to pay $70 for games, but at the same time, am I not just gonna play games? Mm -hmm. Am I just, am I just gonna like be miserable? Like, <laughs> It's like, no, like, you know, uh, Xbox, like, you're going to give us $70. I guess I'm giving you $70. I actually think right now there's more issues mm. with padding games and make and fluffing games, yeah. making them too long yeah. than there is making games too short. Absolutely. For the most part, if a game is done well and it's too short it, it, and it's short, I don't see a whole lot of people really giving it a whole lot of, a lot, a lot of, uh, you know, be, uh, you know, negative critiques. Mm. I see more people that's looking at games like yo you should have just cut this whole section out of the game mm. like a, a good example of that would be like god of war ragnarok i felt like they you know the pacing to that was weird it was a great game and it deserved yeah. game of the year that year but the pacing was weird i'm gonna say now i i, I agree with you on the pacing part like uh games being too long i'm sorry like there's a lot of fluff there's a lot of fluffing games so I, do, I will say, I think games should, I think the pricing of games should be kind of just like open. It shouldn't be like a fixed price. I feel like. I agree. I agree. That, that's part of the issue with the industry. Yeah. Is people feel like, okay, you know, we make a AAA product. We got to get $60, $70 out of mm -hmm. it. And it's like, but, you know, a lot of these games want GTA money. They want, you know, uh, another example, like God of War money, mm -hmm. but they don't have the product. And. It's like not all triple A's are created equal. I'm gonna give you guys a reason why games shouldn't have like a bear. I think at this point it should be like you know is if the I feel like games like for example GTA, Red Dead, um, like Bethesda type games, those huge RPGs like the the Zeldas and like games that you know that yeah they're long but they're big crazy budget. I think they really shouldn't have a cap. And when I say they don't have a cap, I mean their game, if they if the game if they feel the game is worth eighty dollars, because they try to get you with eighty dollars anyway with all these stupid ass limited editions and stuff like that, right? If the game's eighty dollars, ninety dollars, fine. That's just the value of that game, right? But like a game like, for example, perfect game I played two of the, I think what two of the uh, best games I played of recent that were just perfect for my time. That was Dead Island Two and the Callisto Protocol. I beat the Callisto Protocol like twice and i think a, a, a playthrough of the callisto protocol is what how wait maybe eight hours maybe uh i think a game like that now that game was expensive um you could tell Do they you put think a whole that lot. game was too short no no you know why because i feel like so they uh, added let, replay they added a decent amount of replayability the, l l let's break this down like what would you consider a short game that mm -hmm 
kind of disappointed you? A game that was short that disappointed me. That you felt like you didn't get your money's worth. There's plenty of games where I feel like I didn't get my money's worth, but it's not because they were short. It's because See, I that's didn't how I like feel. Them. That's the thing. Short. I, 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 I feel like I can't really give you examples of a short game that I didn't like just because it ended too soon. Yeah. There's always other variables yeah. that made that shit a stinker yeah. that had nothing to do with it being short. Yeah, absolutely. No, absolutely. Um, so, like, again, short games shouldn't bother me now. It should. I don't. The thing is not. Every, and that's the thing. The reason why I feel like games need to like their pricing is broken for games because not every game is worth the same. But like there's a game like GTA six and uh, let's say, uh, for example, uh, I'm trying to think of an example. Oh, my God. What's a, a good example? I'm, I'm blanking on it, bro. I'm blanking on what's a good what's a game a big game that's about to really like for example how much is Alan Wake two going to cost? Probably sixty, sixty or seventy, something like that. Is it going to be full price? I couldn't tell you to be honest. Actually, with you. I can I, I can check technically the um uh, the store, uh, but a game like Alan Wake two, let's say if they want seventy dollars for that game, right? In a game like Starfield, right? Let's say they both and they both seventy dollars. I don't think Alan Wake Two is worth seventy dollars. It shouldn't be seventy dollars. How, how do you know? Because the game, is I know. I'm just. It's just yeah. the type. Is I feel like there's it. I feel like there's a lot of games that belong in the like fifty forty dollar price range. You know who does a good job at that? Uh, Focus Home. Focus Home, majority of their games are $50. They're, they're like, they're, it's like they're targeting like triple A. Um, they're targeting like a triple A AAA experience, but they just always fall short, but their games are appropriately priced. So, so how do you feel about people saying that these studios and publishers, they have to price their game accordingly because mm -hmm. if you look at something that is too cheap, you feel like it's a negative product compared to something that costs more. Because I do think that does exist. Yeah. And that is a yeah. dilemma yeah. that they have to navigate around. Is it like a huge dilemma? No. Like, I, I feel like, look, at the end of the day, for the most part, there are exceptions. There's outliners of mm. good games that came out that just bombed for no reason. I would consider like the first dying light when it first came out it was sold entirely on word of mouth and the reviewers seemed to not like it but mm -hmm. for the most part if you make good games they're going to sell themselves yeah there, i think what happened what needs to happen is that there is that trap that too cheap that walmart effect like if something's too cheap then you're not going to buy it because you don't believe it's you know quality um, and, and we all suffer from that because there's a, there's a ton of great games available now that a lot of us didn't play. There are like $24, $25, $30 maybe um, that, you know, and I think it's more so is effective marketing that can address that. You know, Take Two, 2K experimented with this with their basketball and football game when they were losing their license uh, to Madden. Uh, when uh, in, in 2005, and they said, "F it, you know, we're gonna release our football game, and it's only gonna be twenty dollars." And the 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 problem, the game was better than it was. It was better than Madden that year. Their basketball game was that? better, and their football game was better that I year. I feel you on that, but I think there's caviars behind that. Mm -hmm. That's a sports game that you can get away with a lot more stuff. But when mm -hmm. you're a brand new IP mm -hmm. and you're thirty dollars, and all the AAA, you could be a AAA being labeled as a thirty forty dollar game. And a lot of gamers are going to look at that as an indie game because of its price. True, but the thing is, at the, at the end of the day, it, you're in a trap situation, right? You know what I mean? Because the thing is, unless you have somebody big to push your game or a big endorser, and a big endorser is like a PlayStation or you know a big publisher who's going to eat up most of the profits. Um, my thing is, if I wanted to target, if I was a developer and I wanted to try to push AAA numbers... My first game, let's say if this game, the first game I'm making, my plan is to get at least two games out of it or a, a, a trilogy. My first game, 
might have to be a, an affordable price. Even though I know I'm targeting maybe like what the experience people would get from a you know, $60, $70 game, maybe I price it at $50 and I just get the right so, word okay. about the right marketing. And therefore, I, when I come this? back, like a Plague's Tale, exactly like how Plague's Tale did it. How much was a Plague's Tale one? Wasn't it like a I don't $40 know. game? When it I actually have a, a solution to this. Cool. And I don't think the industry hasn't done it this severe. Let's say your game... You want to hit 40. Yep. But you feel like you're going to get hit with that. People looking at your store compared to $60, $70 games, they're not going to get, they're not going to go. So do a pre order bonus. You pre order, you get $20 off. So you still get those original people at the gate that's trying for that $20 off and you're rewarding them for pre ordering. Yeah. But once the pre order bonus ends, mm -hmm. maybe a couple, like a week after the game comes out, mm -hmm. you're able to go back to that price that people aren't going to look down on your price. But you still have those initial people that bought the game that can hopefully sell your game more through word of mouth. That's actually an awesome idea. Some people do that. Like right now, Stray is doing that, right? But it, it's, it's, it's minor. It's minor, right? I think um, who else? There was another game that did that. Um, that is good. Like your game is originally full price, right? But throughout the... I feel like throughout the pre-order phase and throughout the first week phase, you you offer this what day one discount or a week uh, uh, release discount, right? New release discount, right? Um, and it's like, yeah, twenty dollars off if you buy from this period. Put a time limit, and you give people like, you know what, this game does look good. It's cheap now. There's a sense of urgency. I think that's a perfect way uh, to pick up sales to increase sales. But then again, how much hype is behind that game? You know what I mean? Because not every game can do that. There's a ton of games that are doing exactly what you're saying, where the pre there is a pre-order discount. If you pre-order right now, there's the the game is discounted. But these games has no word uh, behind it, no marketing behind it. So they just kind of sit in a wasteland and don't get pre-ordered, and then they end up honoring the deal for about two or three weeks until they uh, um, decide uh, decide to pull it. But it, you would need like mark you would need like um like good marketing i feel like a game like you know callisto protocol could have done so much better i feel like i feel like get a game like that i don't should have done much better than it did it was a quality product very a uh, very quality product but uh, you know what's funny this is like a flashback even though i didn't i did not include this in my review you know in dead island 2 you couldn't you, you couldn't drive it was less of an open world game it was a better yeah. game in my opinion, but it was, it, it, it was some some like obvious things you couldn't do. Now I think about it. Yeah, and I think that that's intentional. Yeah. You know, trying to get you to go with the flow, for say. Like, it's like, okay, you know, if our game is really a lot more, you know, not as open as like we would like, what we'll do is we will have fake fake ways to make the map look bigger okay we're not going to give you any means of transportation mm -hmm. so you're walking everywhere so it yeah. feels bigger than the game actually is yeah i mean that's i they did a good job because there was there was those uh, moments that i for, completely forgot about and that was a good game yeah it was it was really good it was really good, and I, uh, I get the game doesn't get n uh, enough coverage. It didn't get a, uh, a lot of coverage, um, but you know that's what uh, freaking happens. Um, so you know how I've you know been on my tirade about the lack of Xbox, you know, marketing for Starfield and stuff, right? Yeah. All right. So today I went to GameStop because I went to I I needed to upgrade my son's uh, Xbox Series S um to an xbox series x so that's what we did we went to go get a series x and so i can um allow him to play the amazing spider-man 2 without loaning him my whole entire console um so i'm looking around and i'm just looking all right there's i, I go in because ever since microsoft had like this investment in GameStop, you know they now got the first part of the store when you first walk in you get it's the xbox section right i walk in there's a big poster right matter of fact i think i took pictures of it because i was i was so frustrated it's a big poster next to the xbox section 
And let me know if you can see this. The big poster right What what game is that? Uh hold on, I have to actually blow it up. <laughs> Final Fantasy sixteen. Yeah, and that's a, a place. And Lords of the Fallen on the left. Yeah, yeah. Those are the biggest uh the two biggest posters next to the Xbox section. And on the top, like before on the game racks, there's like the little boxes for the coming soon and available now. I'm sure you got Redfall there, no no available now. You got Call of Duty available now, you got uh uh the crash game uh coming uh coming soon box. You got I had to pull down the Redfall. Games. Yeah. They, they they had a they had a put them in the back. <laughs> ton of us uh, st- i'm like okay yeah no sign of starfield right and then you get the tv section right you know where the consoles are hooked up and they got the tv mounted right and the tv on the xbox section showing off madden the new madden which is fine whatever cool it's coming out next week why not playstation section of their tv guess what they're showing off spider-man, Spider-Man. 2 <laughs> so it wasn't a kiosk it was just yeah, it just yeah, it's just just showing like, hey, it's a reminder. Would you, you know, prefer an actual demo or just not showing? Next, like, like, d- 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 nah, I would rather a trailer being on repeat. It's fine. Like you know what I mean. I would love to play a demo, but we're past those things, right? Um, and then I'm looking up, and I'm just, um, just checking out the store, and I'm like, wow, there's absolutely nothing. And and then you know how back when we were like camping out for Xboxes and PlayStation Fives. You know how they had the little, you know, black and white paper and the uh, laminated, like, you know, how much consoles they're going to have, right? So they had this thing at their cashier's desk, pretty much of the list of the games that's coming out. Oh, and that's where I finally see Starfield. A uh, little black uh, on a piece of black and white paper laminated with a September 6th release, but there's like no, like, massive promotion. No trailers playing, no cutout poster. No nothing. And again, I know people, a lot of people disagree with me on that notion, but it's like, it's, dude, the game comes out in two and a half weeks. And it's like just just mailing it in. And it's, uh, I know I shouldn't care. I I know I shouldn't care. And uh, I already know Starfield is coming, but it's like, bro, like, you 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 should be doing more than you know just that i know and there's some marketing trickling but it's it's the it's the annoying marketing it's the like for example somebody uh, sent pictures you might have, i think you tweeted it to me a picture of the microsoft store right with the data. no just uh, i did iop and people because i said on their eye here's mm-hmm. the thing like i don't really check instagram stuff like yep. I, I don't check like the ads on like even on TikTok, when I scroll through an ad, yep. I, I just scroll again immediately. Like it's not even registering to watch it. So it's like, and I, I have YouTube premium where I would see the most ads. Mm-hmm. So I don't see ads there either. I don't watch TV, so I wouldn't see ads there. Uh, so to me, like, I don't know if they are promoting this, but like a lot of people show me YouTube videos. Someone showed a picture of their TV and it was on cable t- TV. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, you know, maybe they are promoting it. It's just I'm not in the areas where you would promote it to to a casual audience. So I, we saw this Microsoft store. We saw the Samsung commercial, which is so anti-Xbox. No console necessary. It's all about the cloud play and stuff like that. So I didn't really care about that. Um, but whatever, they got to do their job because Samsung got to sell TVs. Microsoft partnered with Samsung. So I don't mind it, but it's whatever. And then you also got to... Con- there's these the, the AMD graphic cards, is CPU like design ones, and I, I don't even think you can buy them. They're like, they're like giveaways, right? You gotta win it. Sweepstakes. Um, they did that, and then they did the chairs, w- which we're starting to see. So I'm start, I'm we're starting to see signs in the Starfield pay, uh, Twitter page is starting to, you know, talk about it, and Bethesda they're starting to tweet about it. I know they got a Q and A coming up. I think next week. Uh, that's supposed to be uh, taking place, and we know they're gonna have a trailer running at Gamescom at the end of the, uh, at the end of the month. But I think these are just low hanging efforts, and again, I'm not happy with it because, um, you know, we we want the game to be successful, I, and 
you, you just want the game uh, game to be successful. I know there's right now Baldur's Gate three is like pretty much stealing the years, like thunder. Everybody, uh, if this game, Baldur's Gate three, and I, I know you're playing it, so you have you pretty much have uh, no more to say about the game than I ever would. But it's looking like this game is going to be game of the year, and it's far look. Baldur's Gate's definitely a phenomenal mm-hmm. game, but the thing is, is like we haven't seen Spider Man two yet. We it's not being game of the year. Spider Man is going to be either on par or worse don't, than his. Don't previous sleep game. on the Spider Man. I'm not sleeping though. on it. Is a- I don't think it's going to win game of the year, but it wouldn't surprise me. If, it's like one of those things where I might not necessarily agree if it wins game of the year, but I would understand why it won game of the year. You know, I personally think it's going to come between Starfield and Baldur's Gate. Now, if Starfield completely flops, then it's probably Boulder's Gate by default. Because I just, yeah. Zelda's good. It's, Zelda still might win. I wouldn't be surprised if it won. It's like the same thing when it comes to Spider Man 2. But I think Boulder's Gate is doing shit that, that you haven't seen in the industry in a while. And it's making, like, people or people that don't play turn based games are playing Boulder's Gate. So that shows you how immersive this game is. That people that don't play turn-based games and you know how hateful motherfuckers are when it comes to turn-based shit yeah and people are putting that aside mm-hmm. because either a they like the they like the you know the immersion story the the choices or they just want to play the game with their friends yeah i mean uh it it was this game's what ninety seven and I mean I know it's only at like fourteen or fifteen review scores but it's right now it's the highest uh, rated game of the year. Um, I kind of there's probably some slight some envy towards it for me. I I don't see anything with that. I don't, I don't understand what the big deal is and and I know there was a report that developers are you know panicking quote unquote because they're afraid that this is this is people are thinking this is supposed to be the standard um I, i'm not i'm not sure the game doesn't look any special to me um all i see from the game is people just you, that you can have sex with all sorts of creatures it, the thing is the though is like i think the reason people are really gravitating towards it is like mm-hmm. you've seen throughout time when games that give you a lot of creative freedom to play the game how you want to play Mm -hmm. those games generally do well and you know this game gets you the choice of decisions that you want to play this game gives you the choice and what type of build you want to play it gives you the choice and what type of like vein in the builds you want to play so you could be a rogue or you could be a certain type of rogue you could be a wizard or a warlock like it gives you plenty of options to play the game how you want to play it it's like breath of the wild uh tears of the kingdom you know when you give a lot of tools to the player to play the game how they want to play it generally the games do well mm-hmm. okay yeah i mean that's that's true it's just like this is one of those breakthrough hits i just you know and this is pc only but it's like what the witcher did right and what's another game that we're like the first games you know they they had a history and then they're just this third game just becomes like a commercial success and bringing people in and they did it they did it with you know little to no um marketing um and again like i said i have my you know gripes i feel like you know th- they are they were in the news a lot you know with the upcoming i know this game's been in beta or game preview for a while as well um, hopefully microsoft figures something out i think this is this the release of this game sets a bad president uh for xbox and a series s and 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 them not really they have to like kind of address whatever situation that's uh going on um with them but they gotta get this game over again when it comes to xbox i I don't plan on (laughs) playing it but it's optics i care a lot about optics and, and you know you don't want um and right now the xbox is looking like very um vulnerable Week. So, so, go ahead. Why does this Starfield comes out and it's everything everyone says? It, like all the marketing. The reason that they haven't been extra on the marketing because they just want you to jump in that shit head first. And 
it turns out to be everything Todd Howard said, everything Phil Spencer said, and that shit gets game of the year. If it gets game of the year, will you say, okay, maybe they didn't need the marketing? Or will you or will you just feel regardless how successful it is, it could be more it could have been more successful with marketing? Yeah. I mean I'm I'm gonna obviously I'll be excited for Xbox and Bethesda and Starfield if it's A it hits it, uh, the meta the meta score that I think it it, it, should, it needs to hit to get game of the year that it gets the game of the year nomination and that it wins game of the year it, it kind of has to weirdly steal the show from Bowder's Gate and I'm not sure if it'll do that if it'll do that great but the thing is is we've seen games that have done tremendous marketing and they showed great results with that marketing and i think if xbox decided hey we're not going to market any of our games except for one and starfield should be the one uh doing uh they do the marketing for but it's uh, but we gotta see excuse me i'm sorry but but we gotta see what happens and um you know, I don't know. Maybe I, like when it's all said and done, they the game releases is well received. It sells a lot. Gets a lot of players on Game Pass. Gets a lot of downloads on Xbox. Whatever. Um, and maybe the marketing, whatever. My whole take and concern is, you no know, cat. Who knows? And it's just you know, I not I don't want you to feel like your concern is invalid. Like for considering it's a new IP and it's made by the people who made fucking Skyrim. Mm-hmm and fallout three this shit should be plastered everywhere from the creators of fallout and skyrim or elder scrolls however they want to that should be everywhere it should be but at the same time you know i understand that we aren't in the same era that we was when they were doing that type of marketing because if you think about it they no one has really marketed like that in years um playstation besides sony who else? So, you don't even see I mean, Activision. Activision. You don't see no one. It's Call of Duty, and it marketed Diablo. Xbox even marketed Diablo. Like, oh, you. I, I just, <laughs> it just all I'm saying is like right now the traditional. Right now, Xbox is marketing a freaking Overwatch Two update. But they're also been marketing. They've been marketing Starfield. I've been seeing it on their, their Twitter and stuff. Uh, what what is their banner right now? What is the Xbox banner right now? What's Xbox's banner? Yeah, it better not be that Overwatch shit like you were just saying. Yeah, I, I know it ain't Starfield because for some reason, like that's just watch them just change it in the last like five minutes. Yeah, it's some orange, purple, blue flowers. What, what what month is it, man? Like it's it's something that has nothing to do with what it feels like gaming. So like, you they they you know maybe it is one of those things where. We're gonna get disappointed with Starfield, and and they don't want to like market the hell out of it. I hope not. I I think I think to me, this game is very vital to Xbox, mm-hmm. and that's the like part it. that disappoints yeah. me. Is that as vital as this game is to Xbox, they should be marketing it more. But let's let's get on the questions because I'm exhausted. Like, hey, we can't be going like an extra not- forty minutes off. No, dude, dude, that we don't have. We have four questions. Was I, that all? We yeah, we asked all of them. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, we we answer all the questions uh, from Patreon. So shout out to DJ. He had some really good questions. Shout out to all the people that um, asked questions. Um, PlayStation is uh, there's a they leaked a, a couple of things going on with PlayStation that that just want to throw some shots at. It looks like they leaked the PlayStation Five Slim, which looks like a PS5 with a line in the middle of it. It didn't even look that much taller. Yeah. Um, I I guess the line is for what the detachable disc drive or what? Like I, I don't know. Remember when they show when the PlayStation revealed the uh the series at uh the the PlayStation Mm Five, and I was saying that that sucker's fucking gigantic, and people were clowning me for (laughs) it. They're like, it's not that big. I'm like, no, dude. That sucker is huge. Yeah. Like, it towers over the PlayStation. No, it's not. And then 
we actually started getting comparisons when the consoles went out to people. Yeah. Yeah, this thing is like Yeah, it's a it's an ugly box. It is it, it is an ugly console. I don't think the console like ever recovered, but again, It looks like a futuristic kind of thing, but I feel like in order for that to have really hit, it needed to be a little bit more compact. Like it yeah. could not be that big. Yeah, yeah, it looks like yeah, it looks like something from like, freaking Keep, keep talking jupiter this, this thing does like it came from One a second. different planet bro like um it feels like they uh i know the the things on the ufos are the thing in the news now this playstation looks like it, it came from something out of a spaceship this, this thing is the size of my torso almost yeah it's pretty like it, it's 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 huge like I can get a workout by by curling this motherfucker. Like, <laughs> it, it, and the the Xbox isn't like much better, but I will say, I do favor the Xbox's look over the place. Oh yeah, me too. It looks like a little freaking little PC <laughs> tower and a little MTX tower. Um, so the, I saw some clips of that. PlayStation also is beating Xbox to 4K cloud streaming. How? How is this? And. <laughs> Microsoft is prioritizing cloud streaming. I don't streaming. give two shits about cloud. I don't either, but it just doesn't make... My thing is, is if you ain't going to beat them in the console market, you beat them in streaming, and they're beating you to 4K, even though your cloud gaming has been in beta with, for feels like it's five years now. It's, it's, it's strange. I mean, I don't know. They, they've even upgraded the server blades for the cloud for the xbox series x ones and um and that is what's to enable 1080p 60 so i know it's strange again i don't know a lot about what's going on with the place if it's going to be like a native 4k game streaming or is it just that is that a scaling it will scale properly to 4k tvs i'm not exactly sure but i just thought it was weird because they were you know they're they're increasing their efforts in the cloud Xbox has been there for a while, and they're getting to certain things first uh, before Xbox. So it's just, just, just weird. Now, uh, Square Enix has um, they've blamed that because their profits are down, right? Their profits are down, and they blamed slow adoption to the PS5. But the thing is, my question t- for you on this one is that. They're blaming slow adoption of the PS5, the reason why Final Fantasy 16 isn't selling what they exp- wanted it to sell. Cause I thought it sold 3 million, which is supposed to be like great. It's the best selling exclusive on the PlayStation 5 to date. Um, if I'm not mistaken. Outside of Miles Morales. And, um, so third party exclusive is the is the best selling one for sure. And um, that's not enough. It didn't meet expectations per Square Enix. But, you know, PlayStation comes out, you know, they sold, you know, this many, uh, like, PlayStations, I think they're at, like, 40 million, whatever. It's selling fast, 300% increase, you know. Um, do you think the relationship between Sony, what's changing with Square Enix? Because, like I said, they were very vocal about, you know, their profits and what Final Fantasy 16 didn't do. They just had an event a couple weeks ago. With where they announced Phil Spencer <laughs> on stage Phil to let Spencer. us know that the you know, Final Fantasy fourteen is coming in, that they're going to work on future uh, future games and stuff like that. What's going on over there? Like, are, I mean, are they back in the bag? Like, I don't, I don't understand. I think you're still going to see the them do exactly what they do. You know, PlayStation is just still going to drop that bag, and they're still going to do it. I don't think Square Enix is going to change because mm-hmm. I think that's. They're okay with locking shit behind a, a console as long as they get a big bag up front. Yeah. Uh, the question is, is now since Microsoft has repairing this relationship, are we going to start seeing Microsoft and PlayStation like fighting each other with, with Square Enix exclusives? Mm-hmm. You know, when Final Fantasy yeah. IX comes out, Microsoft gets that exclusive. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, um... The thing is, is that I want them to, 
I don't have like there's not there's nothing that I want from like Square Enix personally. I feel like again, you know, they've I don't know how bad this Xbox potential acquisition screwed them over. Now did Xbox turn them down for Zenimax or did they turn them down for ABK? Uh, repeat that? Like did, I kind of hurt. Did Microsoft turn down pretty much shun Square Enix over Zenimax or ABK? Like, do you mean just like not give them anything? No, like, what was the? Like, I'm trying to think about the timeline of the acquisition when that acquisition was supposed to happen. I, it would have been ABK. It would have been ABK. It, okay, so it yeah, would have been yeah. after. I, the I think after the Bethesda uh, deal, I personally feel like there might not have been talks about exclu- uh, you know a buyout, but there was talks over like maybe exclusivity or something. I I don't know uh, because. It's just weird that all those Final Fantasy games, Dragon Quest, yeah. all that shit yeah. came to Xbox, yep. and then just something happened, and now nothing. Yeah. Yeah, Square, but it's, now it's it's changing. Square Enix was feeding from 2020 to, like, 20... I want to say early part of 2022, maybe? They were feeding Game Pass with, like, day ones or, like, short like short releases, um, like or shortly after release. Uh, they were they were su- supporting Game Pass with Marvel's Avengers, Outriders was day one, Active Pass Traveler um, uh, came out day one on the um, the box, Dragon Quest uh, B- Builders was it two, uh, the all the Final Fantasy games that they did they were um, uh, Marvel's uh, Guardians of the Galaxy um, that they did. They were they were a big supporter, big publisher behind Game Pass, so the relationship definitely was there, and it turned around um, quick. And then we were we were still oh, waiting. They were very vocal about Final Fantasy VII remake being a timed exclusive, which somehow turned into some phantom full time permanent exclusive uh, for PlayStation, essentially. Yeah, I think you know. We're just gonna have to wait and see exactly what type of relationship happens with them. Yep. I do think you go. I do think Microsoft and Sony, yep. unless unless PlayStation buys them, mm-hmm. they're going to be bidding for for those timed exclusives. Because here's the thing: Microsoft has no problem bidding on Final Fantasy games and making them multiply as long as they're in Game Pass. Mm-hmm. But they know, because that's all they care about. They care about the Game Pass bat. Yeah. But Sony, if they lock down any of that, they're going to make them sign clauses saying it can't go in Game Pass. Mm -hmm. So Microsoft realistically only has options to buy timed exclusives on those games. True. True. Um, All right. So there's... So right now we're in the... The second half of the year, we're looking at, uh, we got Starfield, we'll, we'll shout out to Quake, which can't, uh, Microsoft put out, um, you got Starfield, uh, September, 4th of October, Call of Duty confirmed for November 10th, and we're still waiting on the, uh, the formal reveal trailer, uh, something unique is happening with that. Whereas all your any everything you did or like stuff purchases and stuff purchased from Modern Warfare Two will carry over, um, so I'm questioning whether this is like a full standalone or is this an update to the existing game. And then December first, Stalker Two is rumored for December first. Uh, have you seen that? Hi. Sorry about that. No. I didn't realize I was muted. I think it's a good year. I do. I think this year is going to be a, a great year. It just depends. Mm-hmm. You know, all these all these games could come out this year. Mm-hmm. Hell, hell, even Hellblade could have came out this year. But if Starfield doesn't deliver, all of it's... It, yeah, all like, of it's, it's going to feel empty. It, it doesn't feel matter. It, like, extremely empty. Because it's like you, you dropped the biggest, the biggest gun you had. Like, you just left it at home. And, and I think that game is more important than all those other games combined. Like, you could argue that Starfield might be the most important game in Xbox history right now. Yeah. Because even back in the day, because I always said, like, even back in the day with, the like, the original Halos and stuff, 
Xbox was just wasn't going to be around without those. Like right yeah. now, they they were proving their existence back then, why they should be in the gaming thing. Mm -hmm. Now they're proving if they're worthy or not because they've went through so many ups and downs. Like Starfield is supposed to show all the all the consumers in the ecosystem, all the PlayStation, Xbox, Switch gamers, that we are going to give you quality. And it's going to be one of those games that puts to rest that we're just making stuff to throw in Game Pass. It's supposed to be the turning point. Now, do you think, uh, like, because of Redfall, do you think it hurts Starfield? Because of Redfall, it hurts Starfield? Do you think Redfall, because of what happened with Redfall? No, as long as, as, long as Re Starfield's a good game, it, it won't hurt Starfield. I'm going to get a water. Yep, gotcha. Yeah, um, that... I, 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 because of this, the way that this year played out, um, like I said, it's, it's weird with Microsoft. It's, it's like it's like peaks and valleys. They started the year off strong. The Xbox developer direct got the you know updates on all these games, and then they gave us High Five Rush, which was a good great good game, high eighties rated game. People loved it. Boom, and then there was like a low from for, that kept us. Pretty much on point for quarter one. And then Redfall comes out. Boom. It bombs. It sucks. It's 30 FPS and it is received poorly. Oh. Let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Redfall is definitely the stinker this year. You know, very underwhelming. Mm -hmm. You know, Hi-Fi Rush did well. Starfield does well. Forza does well. We've had a very good lucrative game. Game Pass year, I think we can both agree on that. Yeah. Uh, you know, Payday Three, uh, the the Stars game. I, I always forget the uh, name. Stars of the uh, uh, Sea of the Stars. Sea of Stars, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that game, like, I feel like there's definitely a lot of good quality stuff, and and I think once more, I, I think once uh, Boulder's Gate Three hits Xbox, it's going in Game Pass. At this point, yeah, you got no choice. They, like, at this, for for all the bad press. Larian and they st won't shut their mouth is doing, uh, yeah they that that, that it belongs in the uh, the Game Pass because they, you know, you know I know it's popular on PC and whatnot. It's got to get, but at that point, how much longer will it take before it gets to Xbox? I think you'll see at the beginning of next year, end of this year, maybe a December mm -hmm. release. It just depends. I don't know. There, you know, they, there's a possibility. They say it's coming, but it never does. Yeah. Yeah, that that hey, th things have happened. There's 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 still shit that we've seen when the when if Series X and the PS Five was first revealed in like the summer of 2020 that still haven't released. Like, uh, uh, was it Volcano High, uh, the Lo Little Devil Inside, uh, that Exo Mecha game, uh, all never like freaking like released. So Texas Chainsaw Massacre comes out two weeks. Um, people are freaking out because they did release the graphics options for the consoles, and uh, there again, there's no 60 FPS mode for the Series S. It's actually one mode, like dynamic resolution on the Series it's, S. It's 4K 30 on the Series S, 4K 30. But I just I don't understand why we're still targeting 4k like it, i get it's a performance mode but it's just like i feel like 4k is like like resolution is like ruin the industry mm -hmm. like 1440p it, it, and like 80 percent of the displays can't even handle the shit yeah. so it's just like they they are ruining gaming for the small majority of people that want that high ass resolution shit it's like 1440p TVs, man 1440p high textures, I prefer that over and good performance where the gun, the game doesn't run like a PowerPoint. And then people was always like, oh, that if you want that, go to PC. No, I want my damn game to run good. Yeah, yeah. I don't give a fuck where I yeah. play it. I think, that, yeah, if they don't do like, all right, so the thing about the Texas Chainsaw is the fact that it's, it's, it's 4K30 in a Series S, no 60 FPS mode, dynamic. The PS5 and Series X is 4K30. Uh, quality mode 
but 1080p 60 performance mode, but it's dynamic 1080p. So is that meaning that that 1080p can fall? So it's like if if, you, if you're going down to 1080p to get 60 f 60 fps on the Series X and the PS5, it, how far you got to go on the Series it, S to get it? Do you think that the game's just not optimized very well? Yeah, these are the same people that made Friday the Thirteenth, right, or Dead by Daylight. Actually, I can get a review code for that game. We might as well. It's a multiplayer game. This is, but you won't play it. <laughs> I, I, I play it for one night. For one night, enough to get about three. Yeah, I'll, I'll reach out. I'll reach out. Um, we, we might do a community. It, it might be that. worth worth the stream for sure. Um, actually, I think I, I could have gotten that, but I think I ignored it. That's what it was. But uh, because I wasn't sure how many copies I should request. Um, but. So that's that, but that comes out in about a week, I think August 18th. Forza Motorsport had the Forza update, and we found out uh, there's going to be four legacy modes missing from this Forza. Um, and so people are blaming already the Series S and Xbox uh, uh, mismanaging because, you know, Turn 10 decided to reboot Forza from scratch and is going to be missing some modes because they switched up uh the engine so the things that will be missing uh from forza motorsport will be it's not launching with spectator mode it's not launching with racing with ai and featured multiplayer and it will not have split screen multiplayer which has been the common theme for this generation and Xbox. So. Yeah. Sorry about that. My brother was asking me a question. Yep, it's fine. What was you saying? No, no, I was saying uh, Forza Motorsport uh, will have... Oh, yeah, we're talking about that. Okay, look here. Here. Here's my thing with this. I got to blame it on a Series S, man. Because uh, it's like it feels like anything that has split screen is it, it, just... Is having issues like and i feel like the common denominator of all this is the series s now obviously it could be it just needs more time and considering this game has been like internally delayed multiple times there's yeah. no reason this game coming out missing any features yeah it should be a complete yeah. game yeah yeah absolutely um i think xbox developers in the gaming and xbox microsoft they're extremely like liberal and Lax, so I don't know. It's it's a, it's a culture thing. They, these these are just too relaxed. Like there's no pressure. Like for some reason, it's like you think it's like one of those things where you know a lot of people feel like they can't overstep and do bad things too many times because like there's consequences for. It. Are you saying like you feel like Microsoft doesn't like deliver consequences for a lot of things, so people just get too relaxed and. Oh, what are they going to do? Fire me? Like, yeah, yeah. That's what I it, feel you. That's what it feels like. Because it's like, I mean, Turn 10, their quality, they don't, they don't, they don't miss. Like, Turn 10 is not a bad studio. Their games are very quality. Um, they usually hit their targets. And personally, a lot of stuff that the shit is missing are things that personally don't really impact me. Um, multiplayer. I don't. I don't even think I. I can't even recall the last time I played. Now, Forza Horizon is different. I can't recall the last time I played Forza Motorsport um, online, and I didn't know you play with AI. I think I thought you only play with AI when you don't play online, so it could feel like you're playing with real people, right? Um, spectator mode. I don't watch people race. That that's a nice way to put me to sleep. I got to be in the game. Split screen would have been nice to have, but again. I, me and even today, even when me and my son play Xbox, we play on separate Xboxes on our separate accounts, and we play online, and we just team up. So, um, again, though, anytime you hear like something new you're dropping doesn't have you know basic features or something that your previous title has, it's not a good look. And, and this is the the longest hiatus Forza that we haven't had a Forza game since 2017 it's been so long that the last force game that came out has already been delisted so uh you know they got to come hard this game got to be good man it is it's got to be decent you want it to be good i'm pretty sure it'll be good um but the thing is though 
you know, Forza is not a game that will uplift, you know, Xbox or, or, or that that hype doesn't have impact. Starfield's an impact game. That's why I don't understand why they're not advertising. And I see more advertising for Forza uh, than I did for uh, Starfield. Like, just basically. I think that might be a Bethesda thing. Yeah. Like, Bethesda doesn't want to, like, heavenly. Like, I don't want to, like, go in and say they're not marketing the game at all. Mm -hmm. I just feel like there's a lot of placement marketing that they're lacking to do. Like, being on billboards, mm -hmm. being on, like, uh, buses and stuff like that. I feel like they're lacking in that area. I, I, I want to be careful on saying that, like, they're not marketing the game at all. Well, right I, now, they're... I don't think that's, that's accurate. They're doing a lot of PC-centric marketing right now. Like, I think Pete Hines showed up to some AMD event, right? Um, and they showed off the custom GPUs and CPUs uh, inspired by Starfield. Um, I think they, there's more they could be doing, and um, hopefully, hopefully, um, wait, what? I'm sorry, I just came across like a uh, something regarding like a Fallout update for next gen. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, this is where it came from. Okay, I'm I'm sorry, this is mad random. Somebody asked uh, P Hines. He was like. Hey, uh, DC Deacon, any news on Fallout 4 Next Gen update? Has been awfully quiet for some time now with nothing shared with the community. And Pete Hines replied to him, Don't know if you heard, but we are shipping a new game in three weeks. A bit of, of a priority. When we have an update, we'll share it. So he's talking about Starfield. <laughs> well, he... <laughs> so he's talking about, yeah, they're shipping, yeah, they're shipping Starfield in three weeks. Uh, they need to start uh, marketing that bad boy. Uh, but yeah, these um. You see that the game was uh, the preload was about to go out. If not, it's out already. Yeah, August. Yeah, let me. I gotta actually check so on that. that. I think that mean that means the game's gold then, right? If you yeah. can preload it. Yeah, they didn't announce it gold though. Do you think that's a big deal if games don't announce that they're gold? Have they ever? I mean, are they known for that? Because some studios don't announce that. Some, yeah, kind of stuff. yeah. Uh, I I know one game that went gold and then got delayed after going gold. That was a uh, Cyberpunk. <laughs> the first time it, they just don't even the want first to talk time about it went it. gold, they had to delay it. I think like three weeks. I'm like, what? Um, but yeah, man. Uh, there's, I mean, there's a there's a a, a lot going on, and um, again, hopefully. No, I was hoping that this week would be the week. There's two things we're waiting on. We're we're waiting on that full blown like Starfield like blowout to like get us amped up, and we're waiting for the UK to hurry up and approve this Xbox deal, please. Like I don't know why. Who? I'm gonna say something that's probably gonna bother um, people, but then don't say it. <laughs> Why is the United Kingdom so fucking important to anything? Like, why? 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 Think, who gave them? Who put them on this pedestal? Like, it was the I worst mistake. The Microsoft, I heard somewhere, and I don't know if it's true, but apparently Microsoft has a lot of money in that area, like, like financial institutions in that mm -hmm. area. So maybe that's one of the reasons. Like, it's like, yo, we're not trying to piss off the government that we hiding a lot of money over there. So, I mean, I don't know. Like, I'm just telling you off what I heard. It's like pure speculation. Yeah. You know, it, it's just one of those things where Microsoft is a, is a global brand. Mm -hmm. And maybe they're not trying to piss off any part of any government because they know they're going to have to to work with them in the future. Yeah. Because they could have closed this damn deal. They could have, yeah. And, yeah, I don't and, know why and it's look like this. the FTC... Is is about to hit hit them again? Yeah, and, and that's why you can't trust the CMA. What, yo, what what happens is that why is it the CMA and, and the FTC were working together? We we both gonna join force and get this damn deal canceled. Yeah. It's like tell tell Microsoft that you gonna work with them to give us more time so they won't close it, and we're gonna grease the right hands and actually get this shit blocked. Like, <laughs> um. If they did, it would be crazy if this shit gets blocked yeah, after they, all they, this. Yeah, it's like, they, again, I don't like, I don't know, man. That 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 would be so annoying. But the thing is, is like, they're dudes had all this time, and 
they what well, they spent all that time looking for ways to block it, and now they actually need an additional what month to come up with an uh, uh, approval. It's like they're ri- they're ridiculous. That whole entire freaking country is ridiculous. Um, like, and they don't know how to do shit over there. So, um, yeah. So hopefully they um get that all sorted out. They got a lot of things to fix over there. Um. Stray is out on Xbox. Have you uh, have you picked that game up? No. There's Atlas has fallen has came out. Have you picked that game? No. Up? All right. It looks kind of interesting, but I I I I I know I couldn't pull the trigger. On I, it. I'm I'm playing Baldur's Gate and another game I can't talk about right okay. now. So it, it's just like I don't. Um, you know, Atlas looks okay. If I wanted to play Stray, I'd play that shit on PlayStation. I just got no interest in playing as a cat. Uh, but yeah. you know, uh, Boulder's Gate, it, it's just it's consuming a lot of my time, and you know I'm hoping I uh, I, I get the code. That's all I'm gonna say here, here in a couple days. So I, I know realistically, I don't have time to play those games. Yeah, because I could have got a code for Atl- Atlas, whatever that game. Why did Atlas you? Fall of- I could probably still reach out and like, get one. Damn, but... you wait till after the line. I would actually, I want to play it. It's just that. Well, uh, you need to be more vocal with me. Yeah. Like, um, I want We to... covered that game at PAX. I could have easily gotten a code. I mean, yeah. I mean, I would think you would find the game somewhat interesting. Was it at least interesting when you played it at PAX? It was okay. It was okay. Yeah, but here's the thing. the thing is, is like, I didn't play it. I watched someone play it. Uh, because the the developer was like one of those hands on people. He's gonna show you the the mechanics, and I think Saul played the actual game. Mm-hmm. But I have, I mean, I have an email. I could give that email to you. Yeah, send it over, bro. Okay. Send it over. All right, man. So this we did this podcast kind of on the later end, so we're about ready uh, to wrap it up. You know, episode 13, appreciate um, you guys. But before we get out of here, Attic, do you have, you know, anything going on, anything you want to share that peeps can look forward to on your channel, which is fast growing? You had an amazing week. Shout out to you and, and ILP. Yeah, so um, definitely go over uh, to YouTube at Gaming Addict for making a lot of content. I'm going to make, like, uh, a, a big... Most of the time, I don't do like crazy bad editing. Yep. But there's some videos like my ranking video. That was one of the videos I choose to do editing on. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna make another one for Sunday because I'm not making content till Sunday. I just today I, I had a video. I was gonna talk about the FTC thing. I already made a thumbnail and everything. But after I did a podcast earlier, I was just like, I was so burnt out. I was like, I need to take a step back and just take two days to myself. Nice. You know, tomorrow I'll probably work on the video, mm-hmm. but that's fine because then I will won't do anything till Monday. Yeah, that's I, if I'm going to record if I want to do any videos, I got to do them actually all like tomorrow and Sunday, and hopefully I'm on on point with the. But you need to tell me ahead of time yeah. and don't hit me with the. I'm having a video go live at nine. And it's it's eight thirty. Can you make a thumbnail? I'll I'll I'll, I'll hit you up tomorrow with what, what I got in mind. But shout out to Ben Kenobi uh, from the Xbox community. Uh, Attic, this probably looks familiar. These uh, hold the line pins. Yeah, you're welcome. These are uh, pretty dope. Um, but yeah, shout out to the Xbox uh, community. Shout out to Ben Kenobi. Shout out to King David. Shout out to the Iron Lords podcast. Uh, consistency, man. You know, you know, I I have one, but I don't physically have it. What do you, what do you mean? They all were sent to Cog. Oh damn. Yeah, we're 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 meeting up in in, in Washington, so he they just sent them all to him. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, that's soon, right? At the end of the month. Oh, nice, awesome. DC or Seattle? Seattle. Oh, great. All right, man. Uh, so, again, man, thanks again for uh, tuning in. Shout out to the Weapon Wheel Patreon. Uh, shout out to BG. Uh, shout out to Attic and the ILP uh, crew. Thank you guys for tuning in for another episode of Playing Xbox Podcast. As always, Xbox is the best box. I am the best spot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. 
We're out of here. Peace.